Here is another tip or idea which you could use for your RT pet. And this example, we're going to look at an administrator screen where the administrator is the only one that has rights to edit the database. We did a previous video where the administrator could insert a record into a database. And yeah, we're going to do a simple basic system where the administrator can edit or delete a record in a database. This is a very simple one. Normally you would have some sort of way where the, the admin or the general user can log in normally and the program will be determined if it's an administrator. And that This is just a simple program, preferably for grade 11, where the administrator system is just like a side system which um, allows them to do special things that the other general user can't do, especially when you don't have many tables in your database. So we're not using the, the, the database to determine who the administrator is. It's just a simple little code, very similar to what you would have in the shops if there was a mistake by the teller um, and someone had to come and type in a code to be able to access or change something on the system. So that's what we're going to do. And we look at the edit and delete of the data in a database. So just to recap how the system is working, obviously this is where our main program would go, where the general user would use and whatever they need to do would happen over here. Now my idea behind this is that if you are an administrator and you need to make changes, you want to access an extra features that aren't on the main screen because you're an administrator and you don't want other people to access it. Then you have, I've got this little admin little A at the top there, a red or a yellow A, and when you click on it, what it basically does is we're not going to get it to open the code. It's going to ask for a special code. You can generate, you can determine your code in any way you want. If it's a hard code built into the actual code, a word that they must type in or a number, or you can use some sort of algorithm to go fetch a particular code from a, a database or from a text file. But basically, if they successfully type in the right credentials, then we make an admin panel visible and we set the admin panel to the, the zero and zero of the left and the top, which basically means, and I think it's over here, this is my admin panel. So it's basically going to move it to here so that we can see it. And then we've got a button which takes us to the insert part. And then we've got a button that takes us to the to the edit or delete part. Now, the, those are separate panels themselves. So I'm going to move this out the way so we can see this panel. So basically, this is going to become my edit and delete admin panel. And we will write code. I've just hidden some stuff so we can just focus on the basic stuff for now. But there are some extra features that we're going to add. So basically, I'm going to drag that down. I'm going to bring this one forward because I need to write code on this button. And when I click on this button, basically we need to do something very similar to what we did for the insert. We're going to bring the panel for the edit and delete. We need to make it visible because currently it's invisible. So we're going to make it true. And then we're going to bring it to the front because there could be multiple panels or that could be in front of it. We want to make sure that it's visible at the front. So we're going to bring it to the front and then we're going to set its top and its left property to zero so that it can go to the front of the screen so it can go and fit in our screen so we can see it. So even though we're putting it at the bottom, we can bring it back to the top to where it needs to be visible. Okay, so there's our code for that. Now I'm back here. I'm going to move this out the way. And so this is what my panel is going to look like. So this one will come to the front. And I've got a little, oh, we're not going to fit. There's a little close edit button. All that does is it makes this panel invisible again so that we can see what's behind it. So just so we can see what the system's going to look like when it runs, we aren't actually doing any database management yet. But basically, these two panels, you can see they're in the way, but they're invisible. So when the program does run, they will obviously disappear. And then we can use the administrator code to make them reappear. So there we go, the program's running. So I click on there to go access the back end. I type in the correct code. And then I can go, hey, well, if I don't want to do anything, I can just close the admin and it will close it. But if I want to go back to the admin, I go, hey, let's type it in again and let's go to the edit delete. Now it brings the edit delete up here. Okay, and so we can do stuff. We can close this part and then, okay, do you want to do anything else? No, we can close the admin. Now we're back at the original program. So that's the idea behind it. There are lots of ways of doing it. It's just, you don't have to do it this way, but it's just my idea for doing that. So let's do the actual editing of the table. Now to edit and to make sure that we are doing it correctly, I'm going to, oh, it doesn't really matter where I put it because it's going to replace it. I'm going to put a DB grid on so we can see DB grid. 
I'm going to put a DB grid on so we can actually see the data in the table. The table is in a data module over here. You can see the data module. So this is DM Pat example. We're using ADO items. They're items in a, um, a shop, for example. So I'm making it a bit bigger. So let's do the connection. Now you see I've got a data source which is connected to the ADO table. And the ADO table is connected to the connections, uh, the connection component. So my, because I have, so for those of you who've forgotten, because I've got, if I go right to the top here, because I've got the DM database, this module, this data module is included at the top here. It means when I come over here, I can access things on that DM database unit or data module. So I'm going to come to this DB grid and I'm going to go all the way to its data source. It's all in red. There's the data source and you'll see I'll have access to everything that's there. There you can see it. The pat example and the data source item. So I'm going to click on it. And by doing that, I have access to all these items over here. So there you can see the data. I've already made it active. Um, just to make sure that the fonts are nicely aligned, I'm actually going to change the DB Grids font. So let's go to the font because I want to make it a bit bigger. It's nice to have fonts to be uniform and consistent. These are all 12. I'll see if 12 fits in. If it's not too big, otherwise I'll just make it 10. Just to make it a little bit bigger. So that it looks a little bit more uniform with the other components on your screen. Consistency is key to make sure it looks nice and professional. So let's see if we can make it a 12. See what that does. It makes it quite way too much bigger. So let's make it a 10. It'll still look a bit better, I think, than just those original. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And we can go up and down. There we go. So we can see the components now. Okay, so let's get into the code of adding or, or deleting things. The deleting is easy because we can easily just go and say, hey, select the item ID of the one that you want. So we can do that. So we can then all you do is you go to that particular item ID and you delete it. Okay, so the reason why um, you want to be able to specify the ID is because there could be hundreds or thousands of records and you don't have to go through all of them but, but you must create some sort of way of searching for the record that you want to delete maybe you want to ask when you delete item you ask for the name of the item and it goes searches for it or whatever so however you want to delete items you can just go okay well let's go fetch the 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 item id so i'm going to go click on this boom, 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 and we're going to write we're going to use that that data module not that one the the data module for the pat example there we go and we're going to write code on here, begin end. So we can say with that, we can say ADO items. We need to search for that particular field. So we're going to first of all get the ID that we want. So I'm going to make that an integer and we're going to get the ID from that spin edit. And so that's the edit delete item ID dot value. And all I'm doing is saying I need to search for it. So to search for it, I'm going to say dot first. We need to go through all the records while not ADO items dot end of file do begin and then we're going to say ADO items dot next okay so what we're going to do is we're going to okay if the ADO items if the item ID is the same as this ID that we just we're asked to delete. If it's true, then we can say ADO items dot delete. In this way, we've done a search and we've done a delete. Okay. So that's if you're deleting one record, it's not going to make a difference. And now we know that with an ID, if you delete one of the IDs, there's never going to be another ID with that number. So what you could do is you could have some sort of Boolean value here and say, okay, be done. So that tells me when the delete has been done. And we're going to make it, we're going to assume that it's not been done. So we're going to default it, be done to false. So we assume nothing's been deleted. And the moment we do delete, then we can say, hey, be done. Oh, let's change that over there. Oh, be done. We said be done. Hey, we've deleted something It equals to true. And that way at the end, we can say if be done is still equal to false, we can say hey, there was no record to delete. And what's also nice about this is that we can actually, while we are not at the end of the, the database table, and while be done is equal to false, we must keep looking. So the moment be done becomes true, we'll actually stop looking for the field. Okay. 
So that's what you could do to go delete a particular record. So let's see if that works. Um, ideally over here, you want to show a message, show a message, uh, item deleted. And ideally you should have a message at the bottom here saying, hey, if it didn't find it, then it didn't delete it. So let's see if this works. So we're going to go to the administration system. Go over here and we want to delete item number five and we're going to go and do that now. So we want to delete item number five. You can see it's there. So let's go and delete it. Boom. Item deleted. And there you can see the number five has been removed. So there we go. We know it's worked. Okay. So if I click on this again, obviously it'll do nothing because there's no item five. You should have a message that pops up at the end. If uh, the be done is still false after all of this and you know that nothing was deleted, you can say, hey, there, that record wasn't found. So that's a simple delete. Very easy to do. Now, if I want to delete all or delete a whole bunch of records, um, this is multiple ones. Then obviously, let's say I want to delete all, I want to increase all the stock by five. So this is a, a edit all. It's going to be very similar to what we just did here. I'm going to just actually copy all of this. Boom, boom. Um, so yeah, if we're going to edit all, this is just a generic edit all. So, so there we go. Um, and then I'm going to copy this as well because we want this. But we don't want the be found. All right, I'm just doing a lot of copy and pasting to save time. Um, while not in the file, we don't have a be done, so I'm not going to take that. Okay, so so begin and boom. And now we're going to over here go ADO items dot next. Okay, so what we're going to do here if we add in, if we change in all the records, remember you put your ADO items into um, edit mode. Then you can change whatever you want items we can say item stock is equal to whatever the current item stock is uh, plus 10 maybe we add 10 to everything and then you're going to post the results that is a potential edit if you're going to add uh, 10 or maybe you want to um, get a value and use that as how much you must increase each stock. It's very rare that that's going to happen, but that's a way you can edit all the records. So that's one example. I'm going to show you a way that we can change individual records and try to find them individually. So I'm going to take this away, this big button. So I've got all the fields over here. So what I want to do is when I want to be able to edit like everything. So you, there are lots of ways. Maybe you don't want to edit all the fields. Maybe you don't want to edit the name. Um, so you can take out what you don't want. But what I'm going to do here is a little, when you click on edit, um, I'm going to do a little feature here where you can actually click on a particular item. Whenever you, you see that black arrow, wherever that, that black arrow is, it's actually the record that will change. So whichever you, whenever you click on, on here, so yeah, you can see that record is the one in, in the focus basically. And when I click on that one, that one will be in focus. So by clicking on the item that I want, then you can actually change whatever is there because you are at the right spot that you need to be. So you could design some sort of search where you search for an item ID, it'll jump to where it needs to be. And wherever that black arrow is, you are changing. You can then say, I'm going to change that particular record if that's how you want your system to work. So either do a search for an item or you can click on it. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever's here and that must become the new item name in that. I don't have to, but if I want to change just the stock, I don't have to type in, hey, just change that, change that, change that every single time. So what I'm going to do is when I, uh, on the event of the DB grid, and this DB grid should have been named to something much better, but let's leave it like that, DB grid. So when the DB grid, uh, it's got a data source, when the cell gets clicked, okay, when the cell gets clicked, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, okay, when the cell gets clicked, I'm going to say that spin edit for the item ID, that the value of the spin it must be exactly the same as what's in ADO items, item ID. And I'm going to do that for all the records. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in for you so you can so you save time. So I've done, done it before for you and I just forgot to add the with the DM pat example at the top. But when we click on the DB grid, which you should have renamed, which I should have renamed, when you click on the cell, change these components to be whatever the current selected item is in the database. So go go fetch the item ID and put it into that. So what's happening there, if you can see what it looks like, it's a nice little feature uh, where you can go, okay, QWERTY. 
and you go edit and delete item if I click on maybe bread do you see how these are all changed to breads values if I click on that whole wheat bread it changes to those ones and so on so you can click on them and that, that'll change so that's a little feature you could do you there are components DB um, edit boxes and that that you could have used which will do that automatically for you without code but remember you need to write code that's going to um, edit and delete it so you could do that so that that you need to have code that edits a database so at least this way your normal components have the values that you want to change it to which makes this edit item a lot easier now because now all we need all we know is that those are all correct according to what's in the database you can then change what you want to change and then you can click on edit item so all we're doing here is we're saying okay with that uh, dm pat example uh, do what well, all we're doing here is we are first putting it into edit mode edit and then we're going to change each and every individual field items so let's say we're not going to change the item ID let's say we don't want to change the item ID so we'll start with the item name and we want that to become whatever is in that edit control for the item name dot text and so on. we do that for all the fields so I went and wrote the code for you. I didn't want to change the item ID because that you got to then check to see if they, they change it to a valid item ID. Let's just change the name, the price, and the stock. Now, even if they just change one, at least this will cover all our bases. So they can change any one of those fields. And then after we've edited, we post our results and then we give a message saying, hey, it's been changed. So basically what's happening here, when I run the program, boom, boom. We can click on there we can type in our code to go to the administration system so now when I click on for example chips over here you see there if I click on it these are all changed to the values for chips I want to say just we've got change the stock to 10 now now I'm not changing those but I'm I'm just picking the one I've changed but because those are the original values it's going to change it back to its original values but that's fine it's going to change all three but we've only changed one so when I click on edit item it goes hey it's changed and there you can see chips has changed to 10 and if I want to change this back to 5 but I also want to change the price there's a special we're going to make it 12.99 and the chips are bigger in this case I'm changing all the fields if I edit the record boom there you can see all the all the different uh, fields have been changed for that record okay so that's what you can do what I would change in this initial design is you would have noticed if I close and um, go out of this program if I run it a second time just something to take note of to avoid a potential error that I foresee is when you go into the administration system do you see how this is referring to item 5 which doesn't exist anymore I would make sure that this always refers to the first item so that it forces them to click on what they want to look and then you can change it okay so those are little features that you could use they're not the only way of doing this particular style of program there are lots of different ways this is just an example of something that could help you for your administration side system especially if you're running out of time and you don't have time to have a database check to see if they're the right administrator and stuff like that then you can just do a simple little admin backend system you go look at the insert video for that part and there you go that should hopefully give you the marks for not only the the edit but the delete as well for your pet good luck for the other video from this pet uh, rt tip series like on the admin insert as well as other ideas that you could use to enhance your pet go to our youtube channel just click on the subscribe we'd love to hear from you so leave a comment um, check out the playlist because that's going to help you find what you're looking for and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way